Yeah, hello and welcome to another update video about the S&P 500. Um, did rally quite a bit yesterday. We had obviously some favorable news around um, the inflation data and everything. Yeah, inflation report, CPI report came out. And it is now where exactly basically where we thought it would get to. Um, if you remember in the previous videos, we talked about um, a possible wave five still unfolding. So one more high. And we had here this um, AB setup with a third with a uh, C wave to the upside likely to follow. So we're going to take a look at that in a minute. But I want to, because it has arrived now at the major pivot point that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. Um, obviously, I haven't been covering the S&P 500 for much longer. So otherwise, we probably would have talked about that level for for longer, but um, only recently started to cover it really. So um, you, I want to zoom out, make you aware of the major decision point, the major inflection point that the S&P 500 has arrived at or is just arriving at. Um, you need to be aware of, of the significance and there is no like, you know, um, joke here. This is a major inflection point. Now, not necessarily something major needs to happen, but it is um, it is the level where two scenarios, a bearish and a bullish one, can diverge from each other. Because at the moment, in both a bullish scenario, here the orange wave count, which would send it higher, as well as um, the bearish, which could send it down to 3,000, 2,500 over the coming months, where that is going to be decided most likely. Yeah, this is the, the pivot. Why is that the case? Well, look, it is the 78.6 FIB level here, the $4,500 level or 4495, um, which is the 78.6 retracement of the um, the October low, yeah, of the of the of the move that occurred between December 21 and the October 22 low. This is the relevant resistance area. And the most relevant pivot point here that I have, the most relevant resistance point is the $4,500 level, the 78.6 retracement. Yeah, it's a pretty clear level because you can draw the FIPS and typically B waves react to it. So what is the bearish wave count? The bearish wave count, a very likely one, um, is that obviously here price dropped in an A wave. We have in this move between January and October, um, an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave. You can count that in a different way, but due to that strong spike here, it makes sense to count it as an A, B, C structure. Um, or you can, W, X, Y is fine as well, but it looks best as an A, B, C. So, but that's not so important for the imminent um, price action here. What is more important is this. Because if this is an A wave to the downside, it certainly is a three wave move down. So in the bearish interpretation, this would be an A wave. This move up is a B wave. So after an A wave low, it uh, would have been quite clear that a, let's say, a, at least some kind of a, a rally is occurring. That rally has occurred now. And we arrive at this major pivot point now. Because um, we can also count three waves up now. We can count an A wave. We can count a B wave and we can count a C wave and that's nearly done. So it works out. We, you're sort of arriving at a destination uh, where we've got the 78.6 retracement. And after three waves, we always need to pay attention because if this move down was in three waves and this move up is also in three, then it could just simply be a B wave top, which would result in a five wave move down like this. Yeah, and that would be a larger degree fourth wave, which could afterwards, I mean, this could take years to play out. Yeah, this can take years to play out. So after that, we would then get a fifth wave. But, it, you know, it could be a few years of um, bear movement. Because yeah? what you don't know <clears throat> is this. Yeah, it, it looks like, okay, you could say, okay, maybe just a year. Yeah, fine. Um, but who's telling you that the wave four will be finished after this? A, B, C. Yeah. This could again just be a larger A wave and then we get a B wave and then we make another move down in C. So just be aware of that from the proportions. This is all possible. So therefore, we've arrived at a point where I think risk management is extremely important. Yeah, it's always the case also with Bitcoin. Yeah? Bitcoin has arrived at a similar level, obviously completely different structure in the chart. But on the Bitcoin chart, we also have arrived at the relevant, a key resistance area. 
And anybody who's bought anything, you know, any positions, let's say in the last few months would be in profit on the Bitcoin chart because we're now at a 12 month high, basically, roughly. So it, risk management is getting very important. You know? This is a, a spot in the S&P, but also Bitcoin chart where, of course, a breakdown can happen. So this is where risk management comes into play because the downside potential is huge. Yeah, on the Bitcoin chart as well, it can. This is a major resistance point here. Here, I can just, I just need to highlight it. Yeah, from a risk management point of view, very important. Be aware of what you're doing here and where we stand, and then you need to decide for your portfolio how you want to act. But it doesn't mean we need to flip bearish directly. Absolutely not, because, as I explained, this is a scenario which is highly likely, but the decision will happen on the lower time frames, and I would remain bullish short term until the short term trend breaks. So I'm not telling you 4,500 and we're now crashing down. Absolutely, it's ridiculous because the short term trend is clearly up. We need to go with the trend. Yeah. So we give it the benefit of the doubt. And um, as long as short term support is holding, it would seem wrong to flip bearish. But for risk management purposes, that inflection point needs to be made very, very clear. Yeah. Now, of this October low here, price has moved up obviously in three waves. Um, in this C wave, we have five waves. One, two, three, four, five. Over the last couple of weeks, I said to you that one more high is likely here. And I go to the one hour chart. One more high is likely um, because so far we, we had only three waves to the upside. So that indicated that either this move here is developing as a diagonal, which was the primary scenario, one, two, three, four, five, which seems to be happening right now. The other possibility was that we get a reset of this wave four, and it was just an A wave overshooting B wave, C wave down, but that's not working out, unless we get a higher B wave, which is always possible, but it's not basically a five wave move. Um, so we're looking forward to this um, diagonal structure, and we start to see exhaustion on the chart. You see that when it's getting difficulties to make higher highs, it starts to look a bit like an, um, I don't know, is it a wedge pattern? Maybe a little bit, doesn't matter. It's, um, so one more tiny high would seem likely because if we're here on the one hour chart, you can see that off this way for low, which was made on the 26th of June, with a one, two, three, four, and then I gave you an idea of the micro count here in a wave five, A, B, C, because it's an ending diagonal, right? Um, and then in the C wave, five waves, a small one, two, you see that better on the smaller time frames, but it doesn't matter so much. Three, four, and yeah, maybe one more tiny high. And it's just below that $4,500 level. So that is the relevant inflection point. So we will be able to, at the time then, provide relevant bullish support for the fourth wave to understand, okay, what is the relevant level that needs to hold for a more bullish scenario? But first of all, on the micro level, we need to establish what is the level that needs to hold really on the micro level to still push higher. Yeah, because this is where it starts. Really first the micro level, relevant support, because this can extend out a bit, right? And um, I think we're dealing here with, let me go to the half, to the 30 minute chart. Um, yeah, it depends on that last high, but certainly, you know, if we talk about this last swing high, 4,460, um, if we make one more high and then break below that level, that would be a first micro indication that a lasting or that at least some kind of a local low has been made. Sorry, local top has been made. And then it's all about defining the relevant support against which the S&P can move higher. And if we break below that level and we, we need to analyze the structure then, because if we start to see impulsive move downs with uh, impulsive moves down with corrective moves up, then these are the indications that we are starting to come down in an impulse. Yeah. And then it builds and uh, I will keep you updated. Just be aware of that relevant um, pivot point here. Uh, I can't stress it enough. It is really important. It's probably for the last, within the last year, yeah, the most important level that we've arrived at. And it may have an effect on other markets, but you know, you can't really, correlations are good, but you can't use them really to make decisions. Yesterday, for example, the S&P went up, Bitcoin didn't do anything. So you can't say that these correlations really are so relevant, but we'll see, you know, it, it can certainly impact sentiment in the wider markets. Um, but you never know what the effects are. People could panic and rally into uh, rush into Bitcoin. 
who knows we'll see but yeah hopefully you liked the update if you did please hit the like button leave a comment and subscribe and if you really like the content then please check out the channel membership thanks a lot for watching bye bye